Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 10 from the February, March 2020 um, International A Level Cambridge 9709 paper one, which is a pure, pure mathematics one paper. And this question here, here we have a question about the gradient function. Okay, so it says the gradient of a curve at the point x, y is given by dy dx equals two times x plus three to the power of a half minus x. The curve has a stationary point at a14, where a is a positive constant. Find the value of a. Okay, now a stationary point is a point of zero gradient. Okay, could be a maximum, could be a minimum, could be a point of inflection, but it's a, play, a point where the gradient is equal to zero. So at, we know that at the point a14, we know dy dx is equal to zero. So if I take the gradient function which we have, which is two times x plus three to the power of a half minus x and equate it to zero, okay? So, you know, basically we can replace the x, so we can say x is equal to a at, at this point, of course. So we can replace the x with a. So we have two times a plus three to the power of a half. If we just rearrange it, that's equal to a. Just replace the x with a because at that point, x is equal to a. And that will give us, if I solve this equation now, I'm going to get my answer. Now to solve this equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to get rid of this square root. to the power of, Something to the power of a half is like the square root of that thing. Right? So if I square both sides, if I square this side and I square this side, then I'll get rid of that square root. So this will give me 2 squared, which is 4, and this a plus 3 to the power of half will just become a plus 3. And I've got a squared on this side. Now I can solve this equation. Um, I'll expand the bracket here. 4a plus 12 equals a squared. And then if I bring everything on one side, I can subtract 4a and 12 from both sides. I'll be left with a squared minus 4a minus 12 equals 0. Okay, so I've just like um, my basically subtracted 4a and my and, and 12 from both sides so you end up with a squared minus 4a plus 12 equals 0 which i can write like this now i can solve this by factorizing i think this does factorize it seems you have a plus and a minus I have to have different signs because the product is negative and the two numbers must multiply to give us negative 12 and add to give us negative 4. So it looks like it's 6 and 2, negative 6 and positive 2. That gives you negative 12 when you multiply and negative 4 when you add. So a plus 2 times a minus 6 equals 0. So therefore we can say a is equal to negative 2 and a is equal to 6. Now, we're told that a is a positive constant. Therefore, we can say it can't be negative 2. Therefore, we can say a is equal to 6. So there's the answer to part A of question number 10. Okay, so the key to this is to understand that at the stationary point, the gradient is equal to zero. So when x equals a, dy dx equals zero. Okay, now part B, it says determine the nature of the stationary point. So that's trying to figure out whether the stationary point is a maximum or a minimum or a point of inflection. All right, so now the nature of the stationary point can be found by taking the second differential and substituting the x value of the stationary point into that and seeing what, what happens there. Because the second differential tells you how the gradient is changing. It tells you about the rate of change of the gradient. Okay, um, so if we take the second differential first, so we have d squared y, dx squared equals, now this is ready for differentiation, so I can just differentiate straight away. So I'll, here we have like a function inside a function. Okay, this is something we have to use the chain rule for. It's like you've got a function, and inside it you have another function. So how does that work? To differentiate this whole thing, you're going to differentiate the function of, as a whole, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. Okay, so the function as a whole is something raised to a power. You have something raised to a power. So you multiply by the power, and you take one from the power, 
And then you multiply by the differential what's inside the function. So if you differentiate x plus 3, you just get 1. All right? If it was 2x plus 3, you'd have to multiply by 2. If it was, for example, x squared plus 3 inside, you'd have to multiply by 2x. So you have to understand this step here. In this case, it doesn't make a difference because you're multiplying by 1. But if there was something else in here, which when you differentiate gives you another term, you have to multiply by that. That's the chain rule. Okay, and then you've got minus x if you differentiate gives you minus 1. So this half cancels with the 2, so you're left with, basically, if you rewrite this in kind of like an easy form to substitute in, this is like 1 over the square root of x plus 3 minus 1. Because Remember, a negative power, for example, a to the power of negative n is the same as 1 over n. And a to the power of a half is the square root of a. Okay, a to the power of 1 over n is the nth root of a. Okay, so this is going to be the square root 1 over the square root of x plus 3 minus 1. That's the second differential. So at x equals 3, then d squared y dx squared is equal to 1 over the square root of, um, so x equals 6, not 3, x equals 6, the square root of 1 over 6 plus 3 minus 1 which is 1 over the square root of 9 minus 1, which is 1 third minus 1, which is negative 2 thirds. So we can see that, okay, at x equals 6, the second differential is less than 0. It's negative. Therefore, we have what's called a maximum. Okay, why is it when the second differential is negative, we get the maximum? Well, as I said, the second differential tells you how something is how the gradient is changing so if you have a minimum a minimum looks like this you have a maximum a maximum looks like that now with a minimum what's happening to the gradient as we're going along okay the gradient starts as a negative and it's getting less negative it becomes zero and then the gradient becomes positive in this case d squared y over dx squared is increasing okay it's something which is it's starting negative and becoming positive. Okay, so the second differential is basically greater than zero here. Why? Because the gradient is increasing. The value of the gradient is increasing as you go along this curve. All right? In this case, when you have a maximum, what's happening is the gradient is positive, And then it becomes shallower. It becomes less and less. It becomes zero. Then it becomes negative. So it's going from positive to negative. It's going from positive to negative. So therefore, the gradient, the, the gradient is decreasing the whole time. So the rate of change of the gradient, d squared y dx squared, is less than zero when you have a maximum. So when there's a maximum and that area, the gradient is decreasing as you go along. When you have a minimum, the gradient is increasing as you go along. So if the second differential for a certain value of x gives you a negative value, at that point, there's a maximum. If the second differential gives you a positive value for a stationary point, at that point, then you have a minimum. Okay, so that's something we have to understand. So we're going to write, therefore, the, there is a maximum at this point. There's a maximum at this stationary point. So there's part B done. Now we're going to go on to part C. It says, find the equation of the actual curve. So basically, we have dy dx, which is a gradient function, and we've got to find what y is. Now, y is equal to the integral of dy dx with respect to x. Okay, that's what you're, how you're going to get y. So if we integrate this, which is 2 times x plus 3 to the power of a half minus x with respect to x, okay, um, it will give us our function, all right? Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, okay? Um, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. The first one I'm going to show you of doing this is by doing this as an indefinite integral and having a value of c and then finding what that value of c is. But I'm also going to show you a slightly different way as well. We've got enough space here, so I'll show you a different way as well. Um, of using this as a definite integral. So first we're going to use an indefinite integral. So we're just going to integrate this and have plus c. So to integrate this first term here, well, this is, again, something where you have a function inside a function. Uh, 
Now, for us to be able to integrate this using the reverse of the chain rule, what's outside the function should be of the right order of what's the differential of what's inside the function. Now, if you differentiate x plus 3, you get a constant 1. What's multiplying outside the function? Constant 2, so that's fine. We can integrate this by reversing the chain rule, which works as adding 1 to the power, so we leave this as it is. We add 1 to the power, so 1 third, 1 half, so it probably becomes 3 over 2. Then we divide by the new power, which is 3 over 2. And then we multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is going to be just a 1 there. Okay, that's reversing the chain rule. If you integrate x, you're going to increase the power by 1. Remember, there's a power of 1 here. If you increase it by 1 and divide by the new power, okay, and then, as I said, in this case, I'm going to write plus c. So this is what y is equal to. Right, so let's just simplify this a little bit first. So we have y equals, now when you divide something by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this is going to be 4 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus x squared over 2 plus c. Now our answer is not complete until we found the value of c. So we know that the point, one point that lies on this line, okay, is 614. That's a point that we know for sure lies on the line. That was the point we found with the value of x um, as 6 when um, y is 14, um, because that was a stationary point, right? So it, this point satisfies the equation of this line, so we can use this point to find the value of c. We can replace the y with 14 and the x with 6. So we have 14 equals 4 over 3 times 6 plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2. Now, to the power of 3 over 2 is the same as the square root of this thing cubed. Okay, a to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to the square root of a cubed. If you remember, a to the power of m over n is equal to the nth root of a to the power of m. Okay, we don't have to write a 2 here. The square root means there's a 2 there. So the square root of 6 plus 3 cubed minus, um, as I said, we're going to have uh, 6 squared over 2 plus c. So this will help us find what c is. So you have 14 equals 4 over 3 times, that's going to be um, 9 cubed, um, which is going to be, x is 6, 6 plus 3, oh sorry, yeah, 6 plus 3, that's right. Um, yeah, 9 cubed, the square root of 9 cubed, what's 9 cubed? In fact, the square root of 9 cubed, What's the square root of 9 first? That's easier. This is 36 over 2, which is 18 plus c. So the square root of 9 is 3. 3 cubed is 27. So this will give us 27. So 4 equals 4 times 27 over 3 minus 18 plus c. The 3 and the 27 cancel out, giving us 9 there. Uh, 4 times 9 is 36. 36 minus 18 is 18. So you have 14 equals 18 plus c. So c equals negative 4. So therefore, we can say y is equal to, we can write it in this formula here, 4 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus x squared over 2 minus 4. And that's the answer to the question. Okay, where we used this indefinite um, integral, we used plus c, and then we found what c is by using this value. Now, there's another way of dealing with this question where we can go from this stage here, where we're trying to find the integral of 2 times x plus 3 to the power of a half minus um, x with respect to x. Now, what you can do in this case here is you can say we're going to basically, um, you know, do the following, right? This is already a y here, that's fine, okay? So um, I know that when y is unknown, x is, we want to find what y, in, what y is in terms of x. We know that when y is 14, x is 6, okay? When y is 14, x is 6, right? So I can proceed from here. I, I can make this into an in, into a, an in, uh, sorry, a definite integral. Okay, I know that I want to find what y is in terms of x, and I know 
that when y is 14, x is 6. So I can use this now. So for here, this is already, you can say, integrated, right? So I can just put y minus 14, all right? So replace the y with y and the y with 14 equals. Then we're going to integrate this, and we're going to end up with, as we did before, we'll end up with basically this here, 4 over 3, x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2. So we have 4 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus x squared over 2. Now we don't put the plus c, but we put here x and 6. So now I can substitute the x and the 6 inside here, and hopefully we get the same answer. So y minus 14 equals. So you have 4 over 3. Now, and this will be the same as before, x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus x squared over 2. But then I'm going to put 6 in here. So when I put 6 in here, this gives me 6 instead of x. So it's going to be the same thing that I, I got here, right? When I put 6 in, inside there. So you'll see you're going to have a 4 over 3 times 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So it's 4 over 3 times 9 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 6 squared, 36 over 2, 18. Okay. Um, so I'll have y minus 14 equals 4 over 3 times x plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus x squared over 2 minus, and this is going to be, 27, so that'll be 9, 4 9s, and 36 minus 18, so that's going to be 18 there. So we're going to add 18 to both sides. Um, in fact, uh, you know, how do we have to write it in the end? Y equals, we can, we can add 14 to both sides, so we end up with Y equals 4 over 3 times X plus 3 to the power of 3 over 2 minus X squared over 2, and that's going to be minus 4. So we get to the same answer that we got before, okay? But this is using the 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 you know these limits that we got because we know the point uh, four sixteen. No, sorry, um, what was it? X equals six six fourteen. Sorry, lies on the line. Okay, so we can say when we want to find y in terms of x, we know when y is fourteen, x is six. Okay, and we can go about it in that way as well right so there's two different ways of dealing with that part of the question okay when you have a point that you know on the curve you can go ahead and do it this way if you wish that's fine right so there's the answer to question part c of this question uh, tw this is question number 10 from this um february march 2020 paper i think that's the last part yes okay so that concludes this question other questions from this particular Paper can be found in the playlist that's going to appear in this section over here. Um, the playlist that's linked over here will give you questions which are dealing with the gradient function differentiation and also in this playlist here, I'll put integration. So differentiation, then integration. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and the video that's been popping up over here, the card at the top, will tell you how to use my channel in an efficient manner to find what you're looking for, whether it's GCSE, IGCSE, Cambridge, Edexcel, you know, A-level, international A-level, whatever, you'll find my material, um, the video will show, show, show you how to find whatever you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.